What's up guys, Blitz here today bringing you another video! In today's video I have a highly requested boss guide for the Whispers Harbinger boss battle. I'm sorry this took so long to make, I've been so tied up with other projects and streaming that this one fell a bit behind. But here we are! This fight has been covered already in many YouTube videos, but I wanted to come up with a twist of my own in this fight to make things go by a bit smoother, while also styling a bit with our very own build, the Instant Limit Break. This method requires no Ragnarok accessory and involves a crazy combination that we've covered extensively on this channel. Click the video on the top right to learn more about the Instant Limit Break build. If you have not yet, you are in for a treat when replaying this game, trust me. On hard mode, this battle is a tough one at first to get by, but with this setup, you can skip certain mechanics and just blow by this battle like it's on easy mode. Thank you guys for the support on the previous video, the Unlimited ATB build. If you have not yet, please be sure to hit that link on the top right to check out that one as it can change up how you play this game entirely and really makes me want to restream Final Fantasy VII Remake on hard mode all over again. More guides and builds are coming soon and I can't wait for all of that. If you have not yet, please be sure to hit the join button and become a member to get exclusive emojis and access to perks such as video shoutouts at the end of our videos. Now with all that being said, let's get into the video. This boss battle requires you to use all four party members at different points of the battle, and depending on who you damage enemies with the most and stagger them, will determine which party members help you out in the next boss fight. With this video's method, you will get Aerith and Tifa every time to help you out in the next fight, I just wanted to clarify that. With Cloud, we want to use the Hard Edge to deal the most damage possible and have on the Chain Bangle to reduce the amount of damage taken. Also, the Fury Ring is here to deal even more damage, but he will take a lot more damage as well. We have the healing material on Cloud just in case, and we have two luck up materials to deal the most crit damage Cloud can. Skill Master material is welcome, but it's not nearly necessary. But the free ATB we gain off of this is definitely gonna help. First Strike is needed on Cloud to start off the fight right. Revival material is a just in case option, which is always good to have on hard mode. ATB Stagger will give us back ATB when we stagger an enemy and Deadly Dodge just in case we need to close the gap further to get in on enemies. HP up so that we can live a little bit longer, and Steadfast Block so that we can take reduced damage while blocking and also regain more ATB while blocking. And finally, we have the Ifrit Summon material so this way we can deal bonus attack damage and have higher defense on Cloud. When it comes to Barret, he will have a more reserved support role dealing minimal damage but healing and reviving if necessary. This is so we don't get Barret in the next boss fight because Tifa and Aerith deal with that a little bit better in my opinion. EKG Cannon gives Barret more magic attacks so his heals can help us out a little bit more, the Force Braces so that we can have 4 Materia slots, and the Fury Ring so that we can increase the total amount of damage that Barret will deal. When it comes to his build, we actually have Refocus on for bonus stats across the board, and Provoke Materia not for its ability but for the defensive stats that it gives us. We also have 2 MP ups on Barret just in case he needs to cast plenty of heals and revives. Revival Materia we will be needing in order to have Tifa complete the strategy. Prayer Materia is great for saving MP and giving the party a decent heal. Barret will often have two ATB bars, so this comes in super handy in a lot of scenarios. Deadly Dodge we have on for more defensive stat increases. Steadfast Block so that AI Barret can take reduced damage because he will be blocking and gaining ATB. HP up Materia to live a little bit longer, but to be honest, it's not really needed since Barret actually has high health already with this weapon. And Healing Materia is a just in case option when or if we need a quick solo heal. And finally, we have the Fat Chocobo Summon Materia so Barret can have more attack damage and slightly more health increased. When it comes to Barret, you can build him however you want. This is completely up to you. When it comes to Tifa, we're going to be using the Mithril Claws to deal the most magic damage that she can and it also has Reprieve. The Force Bracelet for 4 Materia slots and the Fury Ring to increase how much damage she deals and takes. This is super important to this build. Now we have HP Absorb and it is paired with enemy skills so that we can gain back health from self-destruct. If you follow this build properly, you will instantly gain a limit break off of this. Parry Materia so Tifa can be mobile and get out of enemy attacks if needed. And Steadfast Block so that she takes reduced damage while blocking and also gains ATB. First Strike Materia is needed so that she can start off the fight properly. ATB Stagger builds us back ATB whenever we stagger an enemy. And a Subversion Materia for the passive where it resists instant death from self-destruct. You don't have to have this maxed out, it works just fine at level 1. But the warding materia that it is paired with is preferred to have it maxed out so your success rate at surviving the blast from self-destruct is much higher. And we have 2 magic ups on Tifa to deal the most magic damage possible and the Bahamut summon materia so that we can deal bonus attack damage and magic damage. Alright, and when it comes to Aerith, we have the Mithril Rod to deal the most damage possible, the Force Bracelet for 4 Materia slots, but for the accessory, please put the Platinum Earrings on Aerith. I don't know why I had the Champion Belt on by accident. I think this happened when I was swapping Fury Rings for Barret, but no worries, I still beat it with the Champion Belt. Just be sure to put the Platinum Earrings on for your Aerith so that you can do more damage. For Materia, we have on Magnify with Healing just in case we need to quick heal everyone. 
and revival materia because Tifa won't have reprieve anymore and self-destruct will kill her in this phase when Aerith comes into the battle. HP up for more health and skill master materia just in case we need more ATB. ATB stagger for more ATB whenever we stagger the enemies and lightning materia is needed to finish off the final boss because it never misses. We have a refocus materia on for bonus stats and two MP ups just in case we need to cast cures and revives a lot. And finally, we have the Summon Materia Leviathan so that we can get bonus magic damage and bonus magic defense. So now let's get into the fight. This section has plenty of cutscenes in it, but I promise you this method is going to blow by this boss super fast. There will be moments of just nothing happening because the Harbinger itself is shocked at what we are doing to it. I'm making this video because I want to showcase to you guys just how flexible and overpowered this build actually is. And what better character to execute this with than our girl Tifa? There were lots of doubters and naysayers on the instant limit break build video so I just want to actually use this build in other hard mode fights just to showcase how easy it is to cheese this game. Not to mention it's an easy setup and feels super rewarding when you pull it off at the same time. Soon as the battle starts as Cloud go and attack the yellow harbinger a few times and get ready to initiate the counter stance. Usually all three enemies will focus whoever you're controlling so this will protect Cloud and deal damage to group them all together. Now as Tifa, you self-destruct when they are all grouped together and this will give you an instant limit break and damage the hell out of them. And now as Cloud, switch to using triple slash and get them down to half health and end this encounter quickly. And now we wait because the Harbinger is super confused as to what just transpired. During this waiting period, the Harbinger may strike you or your teammates, but you still build ATB up here, so be sure to heal up if you need to. I've tested this out a few times, and the blue and red whispers always focus Cloud, so that's why we start off the fight against the yellow one and bring them all together to counter stance. Damage radius from self-destruct is pretty good, so it should hit all of them and just get us through the first phase initially. It's almost like the Harbinger is on hold via tech support line trying to figure out what the hell just happened and how did we crash the game and what he has to do next. <laughs> but eventually he launches Correlation and we are good to go and continue on to the next phase. Unfortunately, we do take some slight damage here, but during the next encounter we have a plan that will make the phase go by just as quickly. I choose to use Tifa for this method because Cloud needs to counter stance often and we need that physical damage from him. Not to mention his Ascension Limit Break is a single target limit break. It can hit multiple enemies but only if they are grouped closely together. Whereas Tifa's Dolphin Flurry has the ability to hit AoE targets and pulls them all in from her crazy badass hurricane kicks to get hit by the final uppercut. Barrett could also make great use of this as well but remember Barrett's health pool is crazy high so you won't get an instant limit break off of him unless you hit all three whispers with self destruct. Plus, I think Tifa in the final fight with Sephiroth is a must-have. I think she does a little bit better than Barret, in my opinion. So after Tifa is done pretending as if she cannot lift up Cloud when she can clearly punch and kick giant metal enemies into the dirt, the next phase will start and you need to follow it exactly as I say, but trust me, it's really easy. And now you will regain control of Cloud again for this battle. Be sure to walk forward slightly with Cloud and use Counter Stance to hit the Red Whisper. You can Counter Stance again or you can counter his second hit with the Punisher Parry by tapping Triangle and holding Lock. Once the Red Whisper is done with that attack, quickly switch to Tifa and activate her Limit Break. You need to target whichever Whisper is closest to another one nearby. And in my case, the Red and Yellow were right next to each other so I chose the Red one. Sometimes the Blue may also get dragged into this, but no worries as they're really easy to take care of when they are running solo. Tifa's Limit Break should kill both the Red and Yellow one, so now you will only have to focus the Blue one or whatever combination of uh, Whispers you have left on your battle. I noticed that Triple Slash with Cloud can actually pressure them pretty easily, especially when they're solo, so I often go ahead and spam that. If you're quick enough with the damage, you won't have to deal with this attack here, but no worries as it's pretty easy to dodge. I select Tifa and just parry around to avoid the lightning attacks, while Barret and Cloud clap that Blue Whisper's cheeks. And now we're just moving along smoothly. We just have to wait again for the Harbinger to push us into the next phase, quite literally. So feel free to heal up whichever characters you need to, and you still also gain ATB here, so in this segment here, be sure to switch between characters to raise their ATBs if needed. If you guys are enjoying this battle and strategy, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps us out tremendously with continuing to grow the channel. I appreciate the support that we've been getting on these videos, and I'm super happy that I did not complete all the boss's guides yet. This way we can still make videos for this glorious game that we all appreciate and love. And now we regain control of Cloud again and can carry on into the next phase of this battle. If Cloud is in need of ATB, be sure to run quickly through this part and attack the Harbinger's hand that comes through the tunnel. This does no damage at all, but it can build you ATB if you are needing it for this next fight. You might not need the ATB since we had to wait almost a minute after clapping their cheeks previously, but if you do because you had to heal or anything else like that, this can help out a lot because you will need two ATBs with Cloud going into this next part. When we get to this next phase, it will be against the Red Whisper solo against our three characters. So be sure to walk forward and counter stance as Cloud two times to catch him and deal great damage as this attack is a pretty weird one to avoid. After that, select Tifa and then self-destruct on him. This will kill her, but it will give her a limit break. 
Now you can quickly revive from either Cloud or Bear to bring Tifa back into the battle and just take out the remaining health on the Red Whisper. And once again, I'm sorry that it took so long to finish this video. I literally had it done about two weeks ago, but I just, I fell off the train, man. But we're back on it and nothing is stopping us. Just imagine how easily you can abuse so many bosses with this crazy OP build. I really am going to go through all of them with this method just to see how far we can push it because I really believe this build is a game changer. Once you have that Red Whisper staggered, all you need to do now is take him to Cheek Clapping City and unleash everything that you got on him. But save that glorious Tifa Limit Break for the next part. Trust me, we have something special planned for that one. And during this next waiting phase, heal any teammates that may need it and prepare for another cutscene. I really do hope Square gives us a boss battle mode where we can access all of this in the VR training room and not have to have like 15 different save files and being afraid of overriding the wrong one because that is very, very scary. But seriously though, can you imagine what this game would accomplish if they added co-op to VR as well? Fingers are crossed this at least appears in Remake Part 2, but I'd love to have it being an addition in the next year's inevitable release for the other consoles and PC for Final Fantasy Remake Part 1. I mean, it would be pretty interesting to see how co-op would work with this game's combat system since the AI enemies tend to focus on whoever is in control. I guess they could switch this up with the usual MMO format of whoever's doing the most damage will hold aggro. The thing is, Square Enix has a lot of experience in its department with Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO. I think this can be done, but who knows when we will be seeing it. Hopefully, it's pretty soon. And also, what are some additions to the game that you guys would like to see? Let me know in the comments below or of the live chat of this video's premiere. Recently, Square has been issuing surveys for Final Fantasy VII Remake via the Final Fantasy Portal app. If you have not yet, feel free to download that app and take those two surveys. It's nice to see them taking the initiative to make sure we give great feedback in regards to Remake Part 1. And I already know with how much you guys love this game, we have plenty of feedback just waiting to be absorbed. And finally, after this long ass cutscene, we will now be controlling Cloud and Barret as Tifa and Aerith are separated from us. Cloud should have two ATBs again for this segment, and again, we will be wanting to start off these fights with the counter stance. This way, we can protect Cloud and deal back tons of crazy damage to these enemies. In this fight, counter stance and triple slash are your best friends to try to get them to half health ASAP. Once they are half health and pressured, you can defeat and stagger them pretty quickly. The tricky part about this thing, though, is that when both enemies are staggered around the same time, you'll want to lay on as much damage as possible so you won't have to re stagger one of the whispers. But if you do have to, no worries because their health pool in this section is pretty small compared to the previous fights. For this segment, you just want to make sure to balance and dish out the damage between both Barret and Cloud and use counter stance as Cloud anytime that they use an attack. That's really going to help you get through this a little bit faster. Things can go right or wrong, it all depends on if you have counter stands ready and available. One thing I don't like about this is that when you triple slash and it staggers them, Cloud will actually use the whole animation on the staggered enemy and it does not damage them in that part right there with the little cutscene. So if they are running low on health, be sure to hit them with a normal attack and avoid wasting two ATBs like I did twice here. Each Whisper you defeat will take down one third of the Harbinger's health. Since we only defeated one here, the next part could play out in two ways. If you leave one alive, you have a chance to beat it before it switches platforms, and then you have to go fight it over there solo, which is not a bad thing, it just takes a little bit more time. But the thing is, if you use your counter stance really well, you can speed up the process entirely. I missed two opportunities where it would have helped me out tremendously, so don't be like me, be better, I believe in you guys. Land those counter stances. The Giant Harbinger will launch correction which switches where we are fighting the Whisper, but thankfully it does not change the Whisper's health and we can continue right where we left off clapping his or hers cheeks. This fight really is all about endurance and counter stance. You have those moments where things can go perfectly, but ultimately I don't see any way that you can run this without taking any damage. But we can sure abuse them with our broken material combinations and make them upset by skipping certain mechanics. When you stagger the Whisper, it's the same process as the other two where we could just go ham and do as much damage as possible to carry us into the next section. Build up as much ATB as you need during the stagger and heal up Cloud if you can. Barret will not be in the party after this, so feel free to use Kiraga instead of Prey. I use Prey here and I only now realize that that technically was a waste since Barret does not help us at all in his last phase. During this next part though, when you get through that cutscene, Aerith will come into play. However, in this next section, it's all about Tifa. If you guys remember, Tifa has a limit break saved up and ready to go and you guys are going to love exactly how we utilize this. For those of you guys who did not tune into our Final Fantasy VII original livestream, no worries, we will be streaming again later tonight. We did not finish the game as we ran out of time before Ghost of Tsushima release, unfortunately, but please join me tonight as we finish gathering the remaining two enemy skills and we take on the final two bosses in the game and conclude this epic story. Shout out to all you guys who've been rocking with us on the stream the last few ones. I've been having an absolute joy playing the original all over again with you guys, and it's been a treat, and I'm sad that it's actually going to be finishing, but I'm very happy to start new games and get us back into the grind. I have plans to stream Parasite Eve 1 and 2 next, which should not take us very long to beat, and I also have some viewer-requested games downloaded such as Legend of Dragoon and Secret of Mana. I'm happy to see you guys requesting these games to stream because I have not played them, and I am excited to get into those as quickly as possible. 
If you guys remember a few videos ago, we talked about the strength of Tifa being maximized by using her ability Star Shower. While I do not know the exact damage buffs, I do know it gives well over 25 and even over 50% towards her next attack. But for this next section, Counter Stance once again as Cloud, and when you deal enough damage, which is very easily done, the Whispers join together to form Bahamut. This Bahamut can be easily melted thanks to our Limit Break, however. And as Tifa, we want to start off this encounter against Bahamut by going into Star Shower to buff our next attack. And then you guessed it, right after that, we're going to unleash the Limit Break Dolphin Flurry, which absolutely shreds and pressures Bahamut. And while he is down, do your best as Cloud and Air to maximize the total damage here to take Bahamut out of the fight quickly and return to fighting the three Whispers again individually. And of course, having the Ragnarok accessory here to get instant limit breaks would obviously be more ideal, but this is just a way more fun method in my opinion to get those limit breaks activated and deal a hilarious amount of damage from self-destruct. Characters in this game have so much flexibility, I can't wait to see what we can experience in Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2. I do see lots of materials not making the cut due to gameplay changes from the original, however, if they do find a way to still have those amazing ones come into play, I'd love to see how they do that. Square has been all about the detail from the very beginning, so I'm expecting us to be very pleased with what they have in store for us. And now, once we get the Whispers to split up again, they will all initiate attacks here, so make sure Cloud has at least one ATB bar ready for counter stance so you can have a much easier time dealing with their attacks. Their health bars are completely washed at this point in the battle, so use any combination of attacks from these characters to send these guys into the Shadow Realm. You can even self-destruct again as Tifa and have Aerith revive her quickly to speed up this process even more if needed. This build is fun, this build is also stupid, just do yourself a favor and try this out on bosses man, you will not regret it. I think there will be way more creative ways for us to battle in Remake Part 2, but this has been my favorite way to go about it so far in Remake Part 1. Now after Tifa's been risen from the dead for the third or fourth time, instantly cast Dolphin Flurry when she gets up since all the enemies are grouped up and watch the fireworks that she puts on. From the beginning, she's been my absolute favorite to play as, but my god, this build is ridiculous with her. She does lose out on damage because she's using magic attack weapons for more limit break gain off self-destruct damage, but dude, even just going for her limit breaks alone is crazy with this build. I can't wait to see what they do with her final heaven limit break. I think it may make a grown man cry seeing that in 4K with 120 frames. Once again, watch another cutscene as the Whispers try to distract us from the fact that they are getting their asses demolished by showing us a cutscene from Advent Children, which actually caught me off guard and I did not think I would actually see this in the game the first time I saw it. And by the way, what are you guys' thoughts on Advent Children? If you've seen it, let me know in the comments below. Heal up if you need it and don't worry because we're going to be repeating ourselves again for the final time. Attack the Red Whisper as Cloud and be sure to counter stance as soon as you can for his next attack. And don't miss the second attack like I did. Don't be a scrub like me. And now you switch to Tifa to build up some ATB and take advantage of the enemies grouping up together like they haven't learned from their mistakes in this fight earlier. And get ready for another self-destruct. If they do move far apart, try to get in between both of them and land the self-destruct. If she only hits one of them, don't worry, she'll still get her limit break almost filled up. And she takes one of them pretty much out of the fight from that big damage off of the self-destruct. And now you gotta switch over to Aerith to have her revive Tifa and then switch back to Cloud to take down that staggered Whisper as quickly as you can. Taking one Whisper out here will bring up a cutscene for Barret and Red 13's perspective where we are teased to holy hell. Barret and Red 13 show off their limit breaks and it just grinds my gears even more that we didn't get a chance to play as our best boy Red 13. He was a mainstay in my party after unlocking him in the original, but I guess we'll have to cry and patiently wait for part 2. And now shield your eyes as we are shown one of the world's most popular spoilers via cutscene. These whispers are real assholes, I tell ya. But once that ends, we now have to fight the final remaining whisper in a 3 vs 1 fight, which should be pretty easy if we just use Dolphin Flurry to end it extremely quickly. Now that may be the case for you, but I didn't have enough limit break here as Tifa because I didn't hit both of them with the self-destruct, unfortunately. But one combo from Punisher Stance should be enough with this amount of health to send this Whisper into a staggered state where we could just beat the cheeks into submission. And finally here, you can end it off in style. I went for the overkill route, but you are at the home stretch plate right here. Just one small thing left to do, but trust me, it's very easy, and this fight has been successfully cheesed. And after that, you get yourself a Cosmo Canyon because it's time to celebrate. We just cheesed this endgame boss on hard mode by killing ourselves over and over again. I think we must have gotten at least three or four limit breaks in that entire encounter. The only thing left to do now is watch another goddamn cutscene, and then when you finally regain control as the party, switch to Aerith, build up ATB if you need it, and then cast Dundara or Thundaga to end this fight. The Whisper is too far away to hit reliably with Cloud or Tifa, so just play it safe and use Thunder Materia because it never misses. For those of you guys who are watching this and are interested in doing speedruns for this method, please feel free to do so and let me know what your times are. The cutscenes are annoying and get in the way, but I'm very happy to hear what you guys were able to get done with this. 
Because of the Limit Break Cheese, I think this may be one of the fastest ways to defeat this boss. And maybe plenty of other bosses as well. And that wraps it up for this video, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this method, as it is pretty ridiculous, but a super fun and easy way to pull this off. I went with this way to defeat this boss because I didn't see any others doing it on YouTube and I wanted to kind of make use of one of our favorite builds, the Instant Limit Break. Sorry this video ran off for quite some time, but these damn cutscenes really get their screen time in this fight. No worries as your boy always enjoys the extra watch time and hanging out with you guys via the live chat in the future from the past. It's always a blast. This was as long as an episode of Naruto and Dragon Ball Z. I haven't done one of these in a while. Future ones will be shorter, I promise, and many other boss guides are on their way. Shoutouts to the members on the channel, happy to have you all on board with us and I love shouting you guys out in all these videos. If you haven't yet, please be sure to join the channel membership so you can be featured in upcoming videos as well. Not only that, but you'll have access to our channel exclusive emojis to use in our live chats. As a matter of fact, check right now the live chat so you can see them. We also have perks that are constantly being updated and an amazing Discord community that grows larger every single day. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys live tonight, so be sure to drop by tonight, July 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern New York time as we finish up Final Fantasy VII Original and get back into the swing of things. Be sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy VII Remake videos are coming your way and you won't want to miss that. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.